This video is intended to make it easier to learn how to operate some of the features on your new coach. Please refer to the owner's manual for complete instructions. Due to the many different floor plans and options, your coach may differ from the subjects depicted in this video. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Dynasty by Monaco. In order to protect your investment, it's important you follow these instructions carefully. I know you're eager to learn all about your new Dynasty, so let's get started. Here's one thing to keep in mind. Most systems within your coach will only operate with the battery cutoff switch turned on. If any feature like the lights or the entertainment system or the air conditioners fail to work properly, check the battery cutoff switch. Make sure it's turned on. Before you leave your coach, don't forget to turn off all of your lights and appliances. You can use this switch as a safety measure in case you forget one in a closet or a bedroom so you don't run your batteries down. Before you move your slide room out, there's a few things you need to consider. Once you've settled on a location, make sure you have enough clearance for the slide room, the awning above, and the bay doors. Always have your coach at full ride height when moving the slide room in or out. You'll need at least 110 pounds of air pressure to get the coach to full ride height. Move your seat all the way forward. Be sure the ignition key is in the off position and that the parking brake is applied. Press and hold the slide room switch in the out position. The slide room will now be moving. This switch is a momentary switch and will stop when released. When the room is fully extended, there will be a change in the sound of the motor. You can now level your coach. To level your coach, set the emergency brake and put the coach in neutral. Leave the engine running and push the air level button once to enter the air mode. The air indicator light and four airbag warning lights will glow steady. Press the air level button a second time. The air indicator light will begin flashing and air leveling will soon begin. It's essential there's no movement in the coach while leveling. When all four yellow sensing lights are out, leveling is complete. The air indicator light will stop flashing and turn steady red. The engine may now be turned off. The processor continually checks the coach's level condition and makes any adjustments necessary. This will continue until the system is turned off, either by pushing the off button or by releasing the emergency brake. Remember, your coach will level even faster if you leave the engine running, so don't forget to set the emergency brake. Push the air level button once the air indicator light will glow steadily. Individually push the raise and lower arrows. Lights will indicate that air is being added or dumped from the suspension airbags as the coach is being leveled. These are momentary buttons whose functions will stop once they're released. The yellow level lights indicate if a side, end, or corner of the coach is low. To achieve leveling, simply lower the opposite side or end of the coach. If a level cannot be achieved by dumping air, then raise the coach according to the lighted yellow leveling lights. Always give preference to any side light before leveling front to rear. When level, turn the ignition switch off, then turn the air leveling system off. When you're ready to travel again, return the coach to travel ride height. To do this, start the engine. Let the air pressure build to at least 110 pounds of air pressure. Turn the air leveling system off and allow the coach to return to ride height. The coach will start to return to ride height when 110 pounds of air pressure builds in the air system. The green travel light will illuminate. You can now retract the slide room. After you have obtained full ride height, turn the engine off. Make sure there's nothing in the way and that the floor is clean because dirt and grit can damage the floor. 
press and hold the switch in the in position. The slide room will move in. The motor will change tone when the slide room is fully retracted. Then release the switch. Remember, never move the coach when the slide room is extended. If you have the hydraulic leveling system, you still need to do things in the order we just went over in the slide out and air leveling section. Always have the coach at full ride height before moving the slide room in or out. To automatically level your motorhome, follow the same procedures just mentioned and press the auto button and release. It's essential there's no movement within the motorhome during the leveling process. The top green light will start blinking. After half second delay, the pump motor will come on and all jacks will extend downward. The system will attempt to complete leveling in one operation. The motorhome is level when all yellow lights as well as green lights go out. If leveling is unsuccessful on the first phase, the system will attempt to level four subsequent times at seven second intervals. If both green lights start flashing alternately, the motorhome has reached maximum extension on one or more jacks. One or more yellow lights will blink, indicating that additional height is required under one of the jack pads. This can be obtained by moving the motorhome to another location or getting additional height by placing a 2x8 block under one of the jack pads. If you block under a jack pad, only one jack should be blocked at a time. If blocking a rear jack pad while the motorhome is on a slope, the opposite set of rear wheels must be chalked to prevent rolling. You can now turn the system off and turn the ignition key off. When manually operating the leveling system, always lower the front jack first. The front jack acts as a pivot point for the chassis and reduces torsion stress from the body of the coach. The leveling system is designed to automatically dump air from the airbags when the leveling process begins. Place the transmission in neutral. Apply the parking brake. Turn on your ignition key. Turn the power switch on the jack control panel to on. You can then push extend or retract as necessary to level your coach. When the yellow light goes out, that particular jack is in the level position. After your coach is level, you can turn the system off and turn off the ignition key. When you're ready to travel again, you can start the engine so the air system can pressurize. Turn on the leveling system and push the retract all button and release. The bottom green light will begin blinking and all jacks will retract. This operation is on a four minute timer after which the green light will stop blinking and go out. Hydraulic pressure in all jacks is automatically released when the retract all switch is engaged. Jacks are retracted by the weight of the motorhome and retracting springs on each jack. Do a visual inspection of the jacks after retracting to make sure they all came up all of the way. Do not move the motorhome while the jacks are still in contact with the ground or are extended as damage to the jacks can occur. Do not raise any wheels off the ground, which could result in damage to the motorhome. The batteries are a crucial part of your electrical system. The health of these batteries directly affects how well your coach performs. A well cared for battery system will give you far more trouble free use of your coach. The deep cycle house batteries are designed to have the majority of their capacity discharged before being recharged. It's important they be recharged as soon as possible after being discharged. Your inverter will automatically recharge your house batteries as well as your chassis batteries as soon as you're plugged into shore power or when you start the generator. If you have the optional solar panels, they'll help greatly in bringing your batteries back to a high state of charge. Solar panels should be cleaned once a month for best results. Check the fluid levels in the batteries at least once a month or more if the batteries are being used heavily. The electrolyte level should be approximately 3 8 of an inch below the well level to allow for expansion when the battery is being charged. If possible, it's important to have some source of power for the coach when it's being stored to keep the batteries charged. If you have a power source, leave the battery disconnect turned on and plug the coach in. This will keep the batteries charged. They should still be checked once a month. If the coach is going to be stored for more than 48 hours without a power source, it's recommended that the battery disconnect switch be turned off. But beware, when you disconnect the batteries, you'll lose the many memory settings within your coach. 
The batteries are the heart of your coach and they must be taken care of properly. If you're going to be dry camping, take care to run your generator often enough to maintain the batteries at a high state of charge for good use and long battery life. The Aladdin video system allows you to monitor virtually every system within your coach from two locations, the backup monitor and the TV in the bedroom. The Aladdin video system will automatically turn on when the ignition is on and will turn off when the ignition is turned off. To turn the Aladdin video system on when the ignition is off, push up on the toggle switch. Use the toggle switch to navigate through the different selections available. Here are some of the functions of the Aladdin. Select Camera is used for selecting a camera or component to be viewed on the dash monitor. The selection choices are determined by the coach's features and options. Engine Transmission Status. This is useful not only while traveling to monitor engine and transmission functions, but also to see how warm the AquaHot system is. It would be the same as the indicated engine and transmission temperature. Coach Electrical Status shows both 120 volt input and 12 volt battery power available and how much power is being discharged. Coach tank miscellaneous status. This tells you the level of your fresh, gray, black, and liquid propane tanks. It also tells you the basement temperature as well as the outside temperature. The trip meter gives you a variety of information about trip legs, trip fuel statistics, and engine totals for hours, miles, and fuel consumed. The time alarm functions allows you to set alarms for most of the items we've just mentioned. For example, if you want to be reminded about scheduled maintenance, you can set the alarm to let you know when it's due. The idea is for the Aladdin system to monitor various parameters continuously so you don't have to. When an alarm comes on, the system is reset to the main menu and the alarm activation window is displayed. This will indicate the source of the alarm. To disarm the alarm, simply move the joystick controller in any direction. The maintenance scheduler gives you information about when you're due for various maintenance items. Modifying maintenance intervals and resetting miles to go should be done with the ignition on so engine information is available for recording. Refer to the owner's manuals for preventative maintenance schedules. The systems options is where you set screen and text colors and calibrate the compass. The other items in Systems Options have been preset at the factory and should be left alone. The last item, Power Down, shuts the system off. As we said before, the batteries are the heart of your coach and they must be taken care of properly. Now, let's talk about the inverter the brains behind the battery. Although the inverter does many different things, we'll only cover the basics. For a more in-depth explanation of what the inverter can do, refer to the inverter chapter of the special features section. The inverter is used to invert 12 volt power to 120 volt power. This allows you to operate appliances when the coach is either unhooked from shore power and or the generator is not operating, like when you're driving. Here are some examples of how the inverter is used. Let's say you're camped with shore power. The shore power will automatically charge your batteries and maintain them at full charge. Turn the inverter on. The inverter will go into the standby mode, which will automatically switch on the inverter in the event you lose shore power or generator power. When power is reconnected, the inverter goes back into standby mode. That way you never lose power. When you're dry camping, that is camping without shore power, you should turn the inverter off to conserve energy. If, however, you want to watch that big game and have some popcorn in the microwave, then the inverter needs to be on. When using the inverter, if your refrigerator is set to AC, you'll need to switch the refrigerator to propane to keep it cold because the inverter does not supply power to the refrigerator. If your refrigerator was set to auto, then it will automatically switch to propane. If you're not going to be using your coach for more than two days, such as long term storage, turn off the inverter and plug into shore power. Remember, a coach is not like a car. It has many functions that constantly drain battery power. If you leave your coach without power for more than three days, it may completely drain your batteries, even if nothing in the coach is being used. Here are some basic things you need to know about this unit. On the inverter panel, you'll find an on-off switch with corresponding status lights. 
a status screen, forward and backward menu buttons, and a setting button. The screen will always show the last setting change that was made. There are three menu modes to be viewed on the screen. Although they're not labeled as such, we refer to the three menu modes as the display mode, the programming mode, and the meter mode. The display mode has various menus for reading your battery state of charge and for changing some settings. The programming mode is for changing settings for your battery charging and generator usage functions. The meter mode includes displays that can be useful for evaluating the electrical system and is usually used only by trained technicians. To switch between display and programming menu modes, hold the arrow buttons down for 5 seconds. To view the meter mode, press only the up button for 5 seconds. To advance through the menus in any given mode, press the forward or backward buttons. When the inverter screen is in the display mode, you'll find several menu screens. One of the screen displays is system status. This will show you when the inverter is either waiting for AC, that is, the inverter is off, or inverting, that is, when the inverter is on and the inverter is inverting power from 12 volts to 120 volts. You'll want the inverter on when dry camping or when traveling and need to use anything that requires 120 volt power. When you see bulk charging, absorb charging, or float charging, this means you're receiving shore power or the generator is running. The inverter may be placed in standby mode on this setting by pushing the on-off button. The green inverter light will indicate standby mode by slowly pulsating. When in this mode, if the power from either the shore or generator is discontinued, the inverter will automatically start inverting. It's a good idea to check the battery state of charge on a regular basis, especially when dry camping. This can be set to read as a percentage of state of charge or as a bar graph readout by pushing the settings button. This reflects the percentage of charge left in the batteries. It's okay to use the batteries to watch movies or use the microwave, just normal evening activities, but be sure to recharge the batteries the next day with either the generator or shore power or the popular option solar panels, the quiet renewable resource. The nice thing about solar panels is that by the time you even think about recharging the batteries, they're already doing it. Set Shore Power This lets you set the amount of power you want to receive from the shore power outlet. For example, if your shore power has only 15 amps available, you may want to set the shore power settings to 10 amps. This will ensure that the shore power circuit breaker will not pop if you accidentally try to use more than 15 amps. You can change these settings by pushing the settings button repeatedly until you scroll to the power setting you wish to use. Remember, the setting you leave on the screen will be the active setting until you change it. Gen Start Stop This screen allows you to start and stop the generator from the inverter control panel. The on-off button you would normally use to turn the inverter on or off is now used as the on-off button for manually starting the generator. Generator Start this can be set for manual start or auto start. Before you can use this feature, you must set the clock first. It's the last item in the menu. You can set the auto start feature to come on at various states of charge or voltage settings. When using this feature, make sure to set the parameters far enough apart so the generator will not cycle on and off too often. For example, you may want your generator to come on at 50% state of charge and turn off at 95% state of charge. That type of setting won't make the generator short cycle. To set the generator start time, push and hold the forward and back arrows for 5 seconds. This will put you in programming mode. Scroll down to set the clock. The number that's flashing will be the one that will change when you push the settings button. After you set the first number, wait a few seconds for the number flashing to change to the other side, then set that number. The generator start, stop, and quiet time settings will work the same way. Just remember you have to set the clock first before you can set the generator run times. Generator Stop This allows you to program the generator to automatically shut off using the Auto Gen Start Stop feature. Again, scroll through the screens and find the setting that will work for you. Generally, you'll want it to shut off at 95% or at Absorb or Float Charge. Begin Gen Quiet This allows you to set certain times where you don't want the generator to start at all. For example, Many campgrounds do not allow generators to operate after 9 p.m. or before 9 a.m. End Gen Quiet. 
This is where you set the time at which the generator can come back on. For initial generator startup, push and hold the generator on-off switch. The switch LED will be flashing while the generator is in the preheat cycle, 2 to 12 seconds depending on the outside ambient temperature. Listen for the generator to crank and run. The LED will go solid when the generator is in run mode. Coach power will transfer to the generator in approximately 40 seconds. Ensure that air conditioners and other heavy coach electrical loads are turned off prior to starting the generator. Shut down your main electrical loads prior to generator shutdown to allow the generator to cool. Generator fuel priming. If you run the main fuel tank below one quarter of a tank, the generator fuel pickup tube will not be able to supply fuel to the generator. It's designed to quit supplying fuel to the generator at about a quarter of a tank so you won't run out of fuel at your campsite while running your generator. Should you inject air into the fuel system, you can prime the generator by holding the start switch in the stop position. This will run the fuel pump only, bringing fresh fuel to the engine and forcing any air in the fuel system back into your main tank via the fuel return line. If you require help while on the road, call 1-800-888-6626. You'll be given the phone and location of the nearest Cummins Power Generation Service Center. Before plugging the power cord into the shore hookup, make sure you have the shore power set to the proper setting on the set shore power screen on your inverter, depending on the shore power available. Turn the shore power circuit breaker off, plug in, and then turn the circuit breaker back on. Connect to cable TV if available and plug in the phone jack. This provides a connection throughout your coach for your phone and computer, as well as your optional satellite system. When connecting the motorhome to fresh water, be sure to use a hose labeled for potable water to ensure the hose will not flavor your water. Connect the hose to the city fresh water hookup. The city water valve must be in the open position. Turn on the water supply. The water pump should be in the off position. Turn off the water supply when water starts to come out of the overflow. When you plan on staying hooked up to shore water supply, turn off the city water fill valve. This will pressurize your coach water system. It's not necessary to use the water pump when you're connected to city water. Make sure you bleed the air out of all the faucets. The purpose of the gravity fill is to be able to introduce fluids directly into the fresh water tank. This is very useful for people who dry camp who can pour bottled water directly into the gravity fill. Adding antifreeze or winterization and disinfecting the water system is made simpler with the gravity fill. The optional SaniCon system is designed to reduce solid waste to 1 8 inch, allowing the discharge line to be smaller and thicker walled. The black water tank drain is for discharging solid wastes. The gray tank drain is for all other liquid drainage. Check that the hose clamps are secured tightly. Remove the end cap of the SaniCon system and ensure the sewer hose is properly connected at both ends. You'll want to have the gray tank at least half full to rinse the drain hose. If needed, fill the gray water tank by running water in the shower or sinks. Use the monitor panel to observe tank fluid levels. When the gray tank is half full, stop filling it. Keep the black drain valve closed until you're ready to empty the tanks. When you are ready, open the valve at the discharge end of the SaniCon drain hose. Open the black drain valve and turn on the switch for the SaniCon. When that tank is empty, Flush the black tank by connecting a non-potable hose to the flush system fitting and turning on the water supply. Let it run for at least three minutes. Turn off the water supply and close the black tank valve. Open the gray tank valve to rinse the line. When the gray tank is empty, turn off the SaniCon switch. If you're preparing to travel, close the gray valve and the valve at the end of the SaniCon drain hose. Remember to replace the end cap on the drain hose. The SaniCon system is equipped with a gray water bypass hose to accommodate continuous drainage of gray water when connected to a sewer system. If your coach is equipped with a power cord reel, maintain optimum performance by running the cord through a rag as you retract it.
To operate any LP gas appliance, 12 volt power must be available to power circuit boards, igniters, and motors. The battery must be fully charged and the LP valve must be turned on at the tank and at the appliance. Some appliances require 120 volt power. If you're starting an LP or liquid propane appliance for the first time or if your coach has been in storage for more than a couple of months, it could have air in the lines and the appliances may need to be cycled several times before the LP reaches them to ignite. To expedite this process, turn on a range top burner until it lights. This will bring the LP into the main line more quickly, leaving less air to purge in the branch lines that supply other LP gas appliances. To use the cooktop, place the cookware on the burner grate over the desired surface burner. Open the burner valve by applying a downward pressure on the knob and rotating counterclockwise from the off position. Press the knob down to activate the igniters. All of the igniters will click at the same time. You should be able to hear them. When the burner lights, release the knob and rotate to the desired flame setting. In the event of a power outage or igniter failure, the cooktop can be lit manually. To operate the oven, if so equipped, push in on the oven control knob and rotate it counterclockwise to the pilot on position. Then light the pilot, located toward the rear of the oven under the broiler. The oven and broiler are now ready for operation. The refrigerator can operate with both AC power and LP gas. To start the refrigerator when plugged into shore power or the generator is running, press and hold the on button until the AC light comes on. Using the mode button, select AC for 120 volt AC power, LP for LP gas operation, or put it on AU for auto. In auto, the refrigerator will select AC power and the LP gas will come on automatically if AC power is lost. To cycle the refrigerator igniter, turn the refrigerator on and wait for about 30 seconds for the automatic igniter to start the refrigerator. If it fails to ignite, no FL will appear in the LED window. Turn it off, then back on again. Repeat this cycle until the refrigerator burner ignites. The gas light on the refrigerator panel will light up when it's ignited. Once the refrigerator is operating, set the temperature with the temp button, with 1 being the warmest setting and 9 being the coldest. Select Furnace on the Mode button on the Comfort Control located in the galley. Then simply adjust the temperature to where you like it. Use the Fan button and set the fan to Auto. If the furnace fails to ignite, cycle the furnace on and off a few times to purge the air out of the lines. Do this by turning the switch at the bottom of the Comfort Control on. Then let it attempt to light the furnace for about 30 seconds, then turn it off. The furnace motor will continue running for a 2 minute cool down period. You don't have to wait for it to shut off while cycling the furnace off and on. You'll hear a small noise when the furnace lights and you'll notice that heat starts to come from the vents. The coach is equipped with a water heater that is heated by two different methods, LP gas and 120 volt AC. To operate the water heater, plug in the water heater and turn on the switch at the back of the water heater. Turn the water heater bypass valve to the normal position. Return it to the bypass position when winterizing the hot water system. Purge all the air from the water system. Supply the coach with 120 volt AC power from either the generator or shore power. Turn on the red switch labeled 120 volt power. Turn on the switch labeled heater. This is the gas burner. You'll hear an audible roar from the burner when ignited. The indicator light will illuminate briefly, then go out when the water heater is lit. The automatic ignition circuit board will make three attempts to light the burner. If the burner does not light by the third attempt, the ignition circuit board will go into lockout. The indicator light will glow steadily when the ignition cycle has gone into lockout. Cycling the on-off switch will reset the ignition board. Note, 
the heating process works at a quicker rate when using both LP gas and 120 volt AC power at the same time. The comfort controls are for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. The comfort control must be turned on to operate any heating, ventilation, or air conditioning function. The coach will not heat or cool any faster by selecting a very high or very low temperature setting. The front comfort control will operate the front roof air conditioner as well as the aqua hot furnace. The comfort control in the bedroom operates the rear roof and the mid roof air conditioner systems. The different functions of the system can be operated by repeatedly depressing the mode button. The fan button controls the roof air conditioner fan speed. Three speeds are available, low, medium, and high. Fan speed control applies to the roof air conditioner's blower speed only. Selecting the fan speed auto adjusts the fan speed automatically, depending upon temperature set point and actual temperature in a selected zone. The roof air conditioner will use all three blower speeds when auto fan is selected in cool mode. If operating in heat pump mode, only low or high blower speeds will be used. The comfort control in the front of the coach will operate both the dinette and living room heat exchangers for the AquaHot system. The bedroom controller operates the hallway, bedroom, and bathroom heat exchangers. To use the AquaHot system, simply turn on the switch at the galley, set the comfort control to furnace, and then set the room temperature. The AquaHot burner provides a virtually endless supply of hot water. The 110 volt switch works for small amounts of hot water while you're under shore power or while operating your generator. It'll also keep the system warm in mild conditions. The AquaHot heating system can also preheat your engine block in cold climates. Make sure the AquaHot burner is turned on at the galley and turn on the engine heat switch at the driver's control panel two to three hours prior to engine start. You can also preheat the engine block with 120 volt AC power by turning on the engine block switch at the instrument panel. A neat new feature this year is the auto gen start that keys off of the coach temperature. As you know, the air conditioners need 120 volt power either from the generator or shore power to operate. Well, this feature allows you to set the temperature at which you'd like to keep the coach and then automatically fires the generator and the air conditioners to maintain that temperature when needed. For example, if you're in a warm climate and you want to go play golf and you don't have shore power available, but you want to return to a nice cool coach afterwards, just set the temperature and the amount of time you want the generator to run. Set the switch to enable and it'll take care of the rest. The outlet for the front TV is controlled by the ignition switch, so the front TV can only be viewed while the ignition is off. The TV operates from 120 volt AC power only, which can be provided by shore power, the generator, or the inverter. Viewing time of the front TV from the inverter depends on the state of charge of the house batteries and any additional 12 volt DC lighting systems being used. Before getting started, turn all of the home entertainment components on. This will help you understand how your system works. Once you're familiar with your system, you may not have to have all of the components on. For instance, you may want to watch the TV without the surround sound on. The coach is equipped with a television antenna with built-in electronics, which uses 12-volt DC to boost signal strength. The booster and the antenna work together to provide the best possible picture in most situations. However, there are times when reception can be improved by lowering the antenna. To raise the antenna, rotate the crank clockwise. To turn the antenna for best reception, pull the outer ring down and rotate it. When you're ready to stow it, turn it so that it lines up with the arrow and then crank it counterclockwise once again. The antenna and cable inputs are both connected to the selector. To select the antenna input, push the button in the in position. To select cable, push the button and release it to the out position. The power button for the monitor is located on the top right, and this switch must be on for the unit to be in standby mode. Standby mode will be indicated by a red light right here. 
The remote control will only operate with the TV in standby or on. Turn the TV on with the TV power button on the remote. Select the component or source you wish to view by pushing the input button on the remote. The home theater system provides surround sound, DVD player, VCR, and AM-FM radio. The television input must be matched to the home theater system output. To play a VHS tape, press the video button on the top left of the remote. Insert a VHS tape and push play. To play a DVD, press the DVD button. Push the open-close button for the DVD player, load a disc, push the open-close button again, and push play. For radio, push the tuner button until AM or FM is indicated on the front display. The input select button routes the other input, such as satellite, through the home theater system for audio. The sound field button selects the sound mode. We recommend you explore the many other features described in detail in the home theater owner's manual. To operate the fully automatic satellite system, turn the power on at the dish controller and the receiver. It may take the dish a couple of minutes to locate the satellite if the coach has been moved since the satellite system was last used. Select the matching input on the TV using the input button on the remote. You're now ready to choose the satellite channel you wish to view. In order to simplify the use of your entertainment system, Dynasty has provided a universal remote control, the Home Theater Master MX800. Note, these are custom programmed radio frequency or RF remote controls. Only qualified personnel using special equipment should program the universal remote control. Push and hold the on button of the master remote to turn on all of the components of the home entertainment system. It may take 10 to 20 seconds to turn them all on. Components must be in the standby mode for this feature to work. Push the main button to start and make a selection. Press the page button to access pages. These pages will reveal most functions found on the component remotes. The MX800 is custom programmed for each coach according to the home entertainment package installed and controls all of the home theater components. These components are listed on the menu screen, which is accessed by pushing the main button. The master remote will act like the remote of the last component selected. To access the other features of each component, use the page button while in the selected component's main screen. For a more complete understanding of how the entertainment system operates, we recommend you spend some time reading the component manuals, as well as the coach owner's manual. There can be several different ways to operate the components, and some are easier than others. The bedroom entertainment system operates in a similar manner as the front and is separate from the front entertainment system. The TV must be on channel 3 to view the DVD VCR and satellite inputs. AV1 needs to be selected to view the Aladdin. To view antenna or cable, select one as you would for the front TV and choose your channel. The bedroom TV, like the front TV, must have the power on and be in standby mode to use the remote. The Eclipse awning requires 12 volt power to operate and is as easy as pushing a button. The battery cutoff switch must be on and the batteries must be charged. Push and hold the extend side of the button. The awning will start to move out. The switch is a momentary switch and will stop the awning movement when released. Release the switch when the awning is fully extended. To retract the awning, push and hold the retract side of the button until the awning is fully retracted and then release the switch.
This Girard awning is very simple to operate. It uses 120 volt electrical power, so you'll need a power supply, like the inverter, the generator, or shore power. To extend the awning, push the awning button, and it will extend all the way out. If you want to stop it for any reason before it reaches full extension, push the button again. It's important not to leave the awning partially extended in the rain. It should be all the way out or all the way in, as the support arms are designed to offer the most support when extended all the way. To retract the awning, push the button again. It will move all the way to the stow position. Again, if you want to stop it, simply push the button one more time. This awning has a wind sensor that will automatically retract the awning when it senses a wind speed that could cause damage. It also has a remote control for the ultimate ease of use. Push the bottom button to extend, push the top button to retract, and push the middle button to stop at any point during the awning's travel. To use the carefree electric awning, make sure you have at least 9 feet of clearance outside. Turn on the 12 volt battery cutoff switch by the entry door. Turn the key on at the one touch switch pad. This key is removable in the on or off position so you can leave it in the desired position. Push and hold the extend button until the awning is as far out as you wish to extend it. This awning is designed to be able to stop and be left at any point during the extension. To retract, simply push the retract button. This awning does not have a rain release setting and should be retracted if the coach is left unattended or if high wind conditions exist. Now that you're the proud owner of a new Monaco coach, we would like to make it possible for you to expand your lifestyle, to include participation in our clubs and rallies. Once we receive the limited warranty registration card from your dealer, you'll be mailed a new owner packet that will include a certificate for your free one-year membership in Monaco International. Be sure to mail that certificate soon. Also included in your new owner packet will be your first issue of our Lifestyle Magazine. As a Monaco owner, you'll receive this incredible magazine every other month. This publication will keep you up to date on rallies and events. Our clubs have many wonderful members who love to get together at rallies, where they enjoy each other's company as well as many fun activities. If you do not receive your new owner's packet within three weeks after delivery, please call Sarah Spicer, Customer Events Coordinator, at 800-634-0855, extension 8272, or email sspicer at monacohr.com. And welcome to the Monaco family. We've just covered some of the most asked about features on your new dynasty. If you still have further questions about how your coach operates, refer to your owner's manual or consult your dealer. And thank you very much from Monaco Coach. All of the video in this presentation was taped in Western Oregon and along the Oregon coast, not far from Monaco Coach Corporation headquarters. A special thanks to the folks at Salmon Harbor RV Park in Winchester Bay and Lane County Park's Richardson Campground and Marina near Eugene for their assistance and hospitality.